processing to the end product of what you buy in the grocery. And um, so I was uh, state chairman for a year or two on that. We involved uh, county extension agents very deeply in that and a lot of news media people as well as all the folks in between uh, that uh, deal with transportation, processing, marketing, distribution, that kind of thing. So uh, did that for a number of years. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we worked on a project uh, called the Citizens Information Program, and we adopted something called Your Food uh, that had been started in another couple of states with varying degrees of intensity. And um, that meant that we took uh, a, a traveling show, you might say, to the major business centers in Indiana. We went to Evansville, South Bend, Fort Wayne, and Indianapolis. And uh, we organized, uh, asked the county agents to help in this. They uh, got in contact with their local producers and people in the food chain, as well as their own local new news media. And uh, we had a program that uh, uh, involved a lot of Purdue specialists, as well as folks from industry that uh, also spoke in, in, in terms of uh, showing the relationship. It's really a food chain from where it's grown in the field until it gets through all sorts of processes and transportation uh, to get into people's hands in the food stores. And uh, those we, we conducted those uh, in, in the, those four areas, and they were quite successful. The county agents got a good turnout of their media people as well as uh, local processors and uh, distributors, that kind of thing. So it, uh, that was uh, who, a worthwhile Who would have been, uh, normally would have been attending? These are the kinds of people, the groups that you just mentioned, they would be in attendance and come? Yeah, we, a, we asked sure. them to come, and right. the, by inviting the local and regional news and radio and television news processors and distributors uh, they had something to write about as a result of coming sure. to a meeting. Sure, right. And, uh, each one would be you know, somewhat different because of the locality. There's a, a, a difference in what's produced in southern Indiana and in northern Indiana and all sure. the places in between. And there are food processors and distributors all along the line. And so they they provided the program material, and uh, county agents and us just provided the <laughs> right. a little bit of an electric charge to get things started. Yeah, get up and running. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay, that's um, that, that. I think kind of describes yeah. that. Uh, had Ag set Day of when you were involved with the had it was that new at that time, or had oh you mentioned other states well, have been was holding a, it? It was a new emphasis. It was okay. kind of nationwide. Uh, uh, manufacturers associations and distributors and uh, food processors were all involved in it and uh, mm -hmm. so what had happened what happened in other states I don't know as sure. well okay. as what happened here but right. uh, we had good involvement because uh, uh, county extension agents were able to involve a lot of people locally That's that local. uh, might not have been easily identified otherwise. Sure. And it helped you in getting the people together. Oh, to yeah. Sure. Was, well, it, it helped the university and it helped Indiana agriculture. That's that was right. a general idea. Was <laughs> <laughs> not, ju not, just, not just to promote Purdue, but to uh, <laughs> understand. Make yeah. that, uh, <laughs> make that happen. agriculture visible. Yeah. yeah, that's right. There you go. <laughs> well, yeah. that was, I guess that just about takes care of. Uh, Ag Day and the Your Food Program and the okay. Citizens Information Program. Um, what about the um, Agricultural Leadership Training Program? Oh, okay. Well, yeah. um, I can come to that almost okay. any time, I sure. guess. It's okay. Uh, that Go started ahead with back your notes. The uh, leadership program had been established in about oh, 19 or 20 states by this time, and it had been funded largely by the Kellogg Foundation. And um, people around Indiana thought Indiana should have an agricultural leadership development program. Eli Lilly Endowment came through uh, with a, a good uh, financial support, and uh, 
So we uh, opened uh, the book for applications, had quite a large number. We decided to restrict the number of people involved in this to 30. Uh, it was a two-year program, and uh, we had a board of people who processed the, uh, the, the, pe the people who had applied, processed the applications, and, the, and uh, identified 30 people that wanted, really wanted to take part in this two-year program, and uh, they invested some of their money as well, I think a thousand bucks a piece, and then the rest of it was make it made up by um, Lilly Endowment. Mm -hmm. And that was very highly successful. The first 30 that we had were largely already pretty well in some sort of leadership position anyway, but uh, this by traveling to different places in Indiana and having a week in Washington and two weeks of foreign travel, uh, it sort of enlarged their spheres right. of knowledge and information. Yeah. And uh, Well, you said two years. Did they come at certain times of the year? They, it would have to, like some of these programs, they were like on campus for part of it, and then, of course, now a lot of it is online. We met in towns all sure. in cities all over the state. Okay. From Evansville to South Bend to Fort Wayne to Noblesville, for example, or some, or, uh, some center that... Uh, had special opportunities to offer in terms of either able to, uh, to manage business it relationships or sure. whatever. Yeah, and uh, we had good cooperation with other universities in the state, uh, with uh, Ball State, Indiana State, uh, um, Indiana University, Notre Dame. Uh, Father Hesburgh met with us at least once or twice. That was kind of an unusual connection, or at least I thought so. I telephoned him, had his number, and he answered the phone. <laughs> I thought that was pretty unusual. That's a good start. The, the president of the he was Notre president Dame University, time. internationally known for his uh, interests in Do you know food. that he holds the record for the most honorary degrees of any living individual. He just celebrated his 90th birthday this year. I'm not surprised at that. He's a, quite a fine gentleman and yes, yes. highly intelligent and well-versed in international right. affairs. He was yeah. very active, yeah. you know, when, he, he's, when uh, the Equal Opportunity Commission, he handled that. He was on the Board of Overseers at Harvard University at one time. Yeah, interesting. And well, still... Lives in the dorm with the students, and they yeah. drop in. <laughs> when we, uh, he ha he was uh, he happened to be in town when we went to South Bend, and I'd arranged with him previously uh -huh. to, to find out when he was going to be in town, and uh, so he strolled in off the street <laughs> to come to right. lunch with us and speak at that time, and uh, so he, he really got to interact. He That's knew nice. a lot about world agriculture. That's good. And, uh, well, after all, he came from a farm, I think, up in St. Joseph County oh, or someplace like okay. that. I'm, I'm not uh, sure. I'm not aware of his background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, I think he grew up not very far from South Bend. So he was a local boy that made good, you might say. And, and stayed in the, in the area. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, most of it. He was a world, he was a globetrotter. Right, yeah, I yeah. Know. Oh, yeah. how nice. So that was, <laughs> that was, uh, that was uh, one really nice uh impressive contact that uh, we had. We went up to Notre Dame, I think, with each of the three classes. Yeah, I know we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't think of the, his successor's name right now, but uh, he welcomed us. Uh, as well I forget as the one in between, but yeah, Jenkins yeah. is the one that's the, yeah, pre Jenkins the president now. now. Yeah. The yeah. name escapes me is the one that was mm -hmm. after Hesburgh stepped yeah. down. Yeah. <clears throat> he was a very nice person and very knowledgeable and okay. welcomed us. Very Did well. they, at the completion of the program, would they receive a certificate of some sort? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. Okay, but, but there would be something that's saying yeah. they've completed, like the CEU yeah. hours yeah. of people. Yeah. And what? we went to, um, took the group to Washington, D.C. for a week. Hey, and, that uh, sounds good oh, to me. We, got, we had access to all the major offices in town. <laughs> and, uh, did you go by train or did you fly to Washington or by do? bus or what? We... We flew. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we flew. 
That was great. I mean, maybe some of the people, they were, it was a good learning experience for them, too, to well, interact with the people. Well, yeah. But, uh, all, these, all the applicants had quite a bit of local experience in leadership activities. Yeah. They, were in their, they were involved in their commodity organizations, corn, swine, cattle industry, as uh, well as the cooperative marketing organizations. And uh, so, yeah, there was a well-educated and, and uh, young group quite willing to learn, and they brought a lot to it, to each of the seminars, as well as getting a lot from the people that uh, made presentations. That were involved with the yeah. program itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. either in economics or business or marketing or politics of all kinds. Um, in our first class, just for example, um, Oh gosh, why do I have a blank for blank spot for a really important person? Were you thinking of Jim Mosley? Jim Mosley. You mentioned was him in, in my yeah. office. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jim was in that class, and he became assistant secretary of ag or yeah, right. assistant secretary of agriculture. Right. And um, he's pretty active even on campus. He comes oh, back, doesn't he? Yeah, and in international mm -hmm. agricultural activities. Right. Yeah, yeah. He's quite an exceptional person, but I mean. There was folks of that caliber that, that have been enrolled in this program sure. ever since its inception. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, well, oh, backpedaling here just a little bit. In, mm -hmm. in 1983, I uh, got an assignment to Portugal for three weeks, and we met uh, at the Rural University in Vila Real, and. Uh, they had, they had a project going with Purdue. I think it was through the International AID program between the U.S. and Portugal. Dave Moses from Purdue Library went along, and so we brought a couple of different aspects of sure. Uh, he he would have brought with the AV materials and things of that. Yeah, uh, AV as well as general. He was sure. very well informed on general library operation. Oh yeah, and from setup. that standpoint yeah. too as well. Yeah, so oh yeah, he. He stayed, I think, for six weeks. I was there for three weeks, and uh, during that time, met with uh, a lot of a, a number of media people and uh, officials from the um, uh, rural university of Vila Real. That's in the northern part of Portugal. Right. The president of that university, his name also was Real, had. Uh, been quite active in the mining industry in Africa, and uh, Portugal had a When Portugal of, had, uh, I think, mi the mining and things there? Yeah. Involvement? Yeah. And so he was here and came to our house for supper one night along with some other people who were already involved in the, the Portugal project with Purdue, and um, learned he was been had been in the mining business and uh, my wife says oh my family's been in the mining business for a number of years and now generations <laughs> and uh, I guess it was the day before Memorial Day yeah this is in 1993 uh -huh. uh, 92 I don't know 92 or 93 and uh, so when we mentioned that, he was all ears and said, hey, I'd like to see some of that stuff in southern Indiana where they're strip mining coal. So that very next day, Memorial, uh, yeah, I guess it was Memorial Day, we went down, we took him down to uh, Oakland City, Indiana, in the southern part of the state. And that was the first time I had ever known that they shut down the big drag line. And, Normally, they just ran 24 hours a day, and uh, they didn't stop for holidays, but for some reason, it was a down day. The day you went there. The, the day <laughs> we took him there, and uh, since my wife's brother was uh, an official in the coal mining industry down there, he arranged to have the President Real uh, go visit Big Red, which is a huge... Uh, drag line. I think it holds 140 yards or 120 cubic yards. You can drive a couple of school buses and the shovel. In the, and he got a real thrill of going up into the cab and that thing. Oh, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> that made his day. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
he took a lot of pictures and he showed them to me later. He stayed here in Indiana doing a number of things and that's when Dave Moses and I had gone to Portugal to take part in uh, exercises down there. And he returned to Portugal while we were still there, and boy, he just couldn't wait to show us the pictures he'd taken. Oh, that great? <laughs> That's yeah. wonderful. So he he really enjoyed himself sure. and uh, got to see what mining was like in From other parts of the world. Yeah. That's right. Oh, that's just perfect. <laughs> yeah. What was that? Uh, what sort of a school was that? Uh, two or at what sort of university? It was, was a rural university. Okay. Yeah, we taught agriculture and many. And some other uh, yeah. disciplines as well. Well, yeah, well, uh, but primarily yeah, agriculture. It was, it was, as I understand or remember, it was, um, it was called a rural university at okay. Real. Okay. Yeah. Did you stay on campus then? Well, we stayed in a house where there was a house that was available, and Dave and I stayed there and sure. ate wherever anybody wanted to take us. <laughs> Sounds like you had a good time. Yeah. Well, why did why did do you not stay longer and he stayed six? Well, months? I was getting ready to oh, kick oh, okay. off the uh, ag leadership program. Okay. And, uh, okay. Okay. So that's why I was only there for sure. weeks. What well, had before you went over? Had the program was the pro program already in operation? Oh yes. And they the, had different people coming and going. Yeah, a lot okay. of agriculture uh, okay. Purdue agricultural specialists had gone to the Portugal project and in all the disciplines, uh, agronomy, animal science, okay. biochemistry, whatever. Right, okay. Ag economics. Sure. Yeah. Good, okay. So that was an interesting point, I thought. To, oh, yes. Yeah. Do you like Portugal? Yeah, it was pleasant. We had yeah. got to do quite a bit of sightseeing while we were there. Right, and, uh, right. I do remember Dave telling me a little bit, now that you talk about it, and when you mentioned the name of the school, it rang a bell in my mm -hmm. mind, I remember, and I remember talking to him before he went, Having been there myself, and I gave him some mm -hmm. tidbits, and then he told me where it was. He probably would be located, mm -hmm. and we were in Lisbon just for a day or two. But then we had that trip down to the coast, which was which was really nice. That's where we landed in Lisbon, and then right. drove my, by car up to the. North my mother Island. wanted me to go to Fatima, but there wasn't any time in the tour that we had, so mm -hmm. we weren't. I was just not able to go. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> okay, um, moving on into the. We, Next on your have, have list. We, there. I guess we've spoken a little bit about the Indiana Institute of Agriculture Ag Leadership Development Program. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was the Lilly Grant. Uh, that program ran uh, eighty-four to eighty-five. Uh, as I say, we went to all major towns and areas in Indiana for each of our twelve seminars in Indiana, and then we spent a week in Washington, D.C. Oh, that was an inter there was an interesting story in connection with that, at least I thought it was interesting. Uh, we had arranged for um, some international agriculture figures to talk with the group. We had uh, one from France and uh, one from Germany, and... Uh, Somebody says, well, let's get somebody from Russia. So I found out who the, the Russian trade representative was and got in touch with him. And the, the, the German and the French representative were already present at the meeting when we, when we started, and no sign of the Russian. But he came in, and, oh, 10 minutes later, and says, well, I'm here, and he had two or three sidekicks with him. <laughs> Melnik Melnikov was his name. Uh, maybe his first name will come to me. Yeah. Melnikov. And he was the USSR trade representative. A big a big number. And that was when I say USSR, it was still the Soviet Union oh, at yeah. that time. And uh, just as a sidelight I called to reach him and went through about three or four checkpoint Charlies before I actually got to Melnikov's phone. Well, that was fine. We connected. He showed up. He talked. And he had his he assistant. He spoke in staff. English? Huh? English? Oh, excellent English. Albert Melnikov was his name. Yeah. And um, then two years later, I called again. And this time, got a direct phone connection to him. He answered the phone on the number that I had sure. been given. And same for the, for the third class two years after oh, that. Oh, nice. 
And <laughs> it was kind of interesting. In the third class, we were meeting at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And which this is in a, Washington. In Washington, D.C. And this is just a short stone's throw from the Russian embassy. And um, I called. He says, oh, I almost forgot that. So he, I looked out the window a couple of minutes later, and there he was strolling down the street. <laughs> On his way. Un unaccompanied. <laughs> and he popped in. He was a very interesting speaker and had a great sense of humor. And uh, he knew, how, they, the he knew they how, how to talk like to Americans. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. So that, uh, just to me personally, that was a, That's nice. an interesting. Just goes to show you're moving up the ranks when you can get direct access. <laughs> That's right. Oh. <laughs> Call direct, how right? I, I, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, we went in the in the second class. We went to uh, Washington. We had the twelve seminars in various locations here in Indiana, and went to Washington for a week. And uh, our foreign trip was to Brazil for two weeks, and that was an interesting country oh, to I visit. Did. Was that what the uh, did you go to the project that was down there in Brazil, Viscosa, or not, or just where did uh, you go in Brazil? Did we go to Viscosa. No, we didn't oh. go to this coast. You heard of that, but we we went. What's the name of the southernmost um, state in Brazil? Uh, I'll draw it blank. That's okay. Don't know why it doesn't come to me, but I'll, but it its agriculture is a lot more similar to Indiana's because of the latitude. Okay. Its southern latitude is almost similar to this, not quite, but sure. nearly in that. And uh, yeah, we had a really interesting visit there with uh, uh, a lot of farmers as well as uh, experts and things like that. And I was really blessed in the, both the Mexico and the Brazil trips because oh, we went to Mexico as well. Well, that was oh. the first with the first group. Oh, okay, and, sorry. And um, uh, Marshall Martin, who was. In, 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 in both Portuguese and Spanish, went along with us both to Mexico and to Brazil, and uh, he really knew how to open doors. Sure. He'd been he had uh, been assigned to Brazil oh, several times with the Purdue Brazil project, so he was he was quite familiar. knowledgeable about the country as well as having all the personal contacts. And sure. So that was, was a good person to you. Oh, yeah, excellent uh, resource right. and interlocutor. And, um, oh, with the third group, I don't know how deeply I got into it, but Go ahead. we went to Washington, of course, uh, in addition to the regular seminars around the state. And then we went to China. This was in uh, 1989. In fact, we were there all oh, about three months before the big slaughter at Tiananmen Square, which was kind of interesting. <laughs> you, and you saw that square when you were there, I imagine. Oh, yeah, we were in Tiananmen Square when we okay. were there. But, oh, we got the usual trip to the Great Wall. And uh, What did you think? Uh, what was your impression of the Great Wall? It was very large <laughs> and very long. <laughs> it's a wall, right? Yeah. <laughs> it winds like in the pictures. Yes, it looks just like it does in the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we spent, uh, oh, a good five days or more in Beijing and, and area nearby and met with a lot of agricultural big shots in the Chinese agricultural scene, and uh, our most precious asset on that trip was Jean Hao. I don't know if you remember her. She was... The um, name rings she, was, she was in Foods and Nutrition. She was in Foods and Nutrition. Right. She spent a few, several years in Washington as a leadership of Foods and Nutrition okay. for USDA. She was sort of tall, I remember. No, she, she was not very tall. No, but, but average uh, size, yeah. I yeah, remember yeah. her. Uh, she and her family had uh, gotten out of China just by the skin of their teeth before the uh, revolution wow. took mm. over. In fact, I think her father was unable to go with them for a while and later was able to join the family here in the United States. What were they doing? Was he a missionary? or No, oh. they were Chinese nationals. Yeah. Mm. And I don't recall what uh, Jean's 
maiden name was. Sure. But, okay. Yeah. And, and oh, she was a wonderful asset yeah. to have. Well, it, it was her first time back to mainland China. Wow. In 40 years or close wow. to it. Big change. Oh. Well, well I suppose, yeah. yeah. When we, when we uh, went in. She was with you on this trip. Oh yes. Good. Yeah, she was our interpreter and <laughs> and bargainer whenever the whenever the class members <laughs> wanted to make sure they were getting their money's worth. Why? <laughs> she, and also in an ordering and things, you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, she was a wonderful help there, but even more so when <laughs> we were talking to government officials in Beijing. Um, she never interrupted or anything, but she told us afterward what they had really said, even though the person who talked to us spoke excellent English, textbook English. Yeah. But uh, in the Chinese translation from his superiors to him, uh, she was able to pick up either various nuances or slight variations to the story, as, as we were told. So that was... She was a wonderful asset to have along with us. She met, oh, the first night we were there, one of her school teachers, a 90-year-old man came shuffling in and she greeted him warmly. Well, they'd been in correspondence and, and so they knew where to come see her when we landed. And uh, also, when we got to Shanghai, she met one of her classmates who had become a physician and was, had been living in Shanghai the whole time. Mm. So they had a really great reunion. At that what point. was your uh, compar the comparison Beijing and Shanghai? Shanghai is what would always uh, I'm a, a good, more, much more Western. There's a big difference in latitude. It, it was cold in Beijing in right. March, oh, yeah, and it was spring-like in yeah. in Shanghai. Uh, we what, also, what time of the year did you go in the fall or no? It's in March. In March. Oh, okay. yeah. And. Um, Zhejiang. We went to Zhejiang province where uh, Purdue has a relationship with the university, agricultural university in Zhejiang. Hangzhou is the town, yeah, city. Now, H A N C H O U, I think, or something like that, maybe. H -A -N -G, whatever, yeah. Hang Hangzhou. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting part of the country to see. Um, it was. The temperature was a lot better than it was in Beijing. We were cold in Beijing. And I bet the I heating was not very good either. <laughs> <laughs> well, we survived the eating. We had excellent uh, interpreters with us and tour guides. And they sure. Yeah. So we, we were all well fed, except one person in the group um, who had a tender stomach brought all of his food with him from home. <laughs> I don't think he ate it first bit of chow mein or whatever we had, which is okay. I know. <coughs> it's You've okay. got to watch out for your health. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. yeah but, uh, when all else fails is tea, you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had enough home home stuff well preserved. that <laughs> It lasted, huh? <laughs> yes, it lasted for two <laughs> weeks. Um, um, oh, um, Dean of the Ag School. Bob Thompson and his family went along with us on that trip, and he had very productive talks with the agricultural uh, professorial and administration in uh, Hangzhou. And uh, so that was that was good. His daughter was along with him. I think he was, she was 16 and had her birthday there, so oh, everybody nice. gave her a big yeah, party. That's nice. Were you in any other major cities, or, or just prim primarily Beijing and, and Shanghai? And then you went into the well, countryside. Well, Zhejiang, yeah. yeah, Beijing, Zhejiang, Shanghai. Uh, I think three or four members of the group extended their stay on their own, sure. and so they traveled to Xi'an, I think, and some of the other All right. uh, cities before they came home. But that was a, a memorable trip. I would say so. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. It'd be interesting to go back now to see the changes over time. Um, well, I'm but sure it would be. Yeah. Well, it was the, the China that I saw uh, that I saw with the Ag Leadership trip was a lot different from the China I saw when I was in the Army in the China Burma India theater. <laughs> Probably yes. <Yeah. laughs> I would say that's big. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I only set one foot in China on the, during World War II. That, that was where our jurisdiction ended. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, well, Beth Archer is continuing. This is about 12th or 13th class of people who have been recruited from Indiana and have gone through similar programs, mm -hmm. visiting places in Europe and China and the South Pacific and Africa. So they've continued a really wonderful mm -hmm. uh, foreign assignment. Yeah, that's very nice. Trip. That's yeah. nice to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> well, those are, I think, about the main okay. things. Did you want to make, uh, how about that, uh, your um, farm forum on WVAA? Oh, program? well, um, I was brought up to Purdue from my job as an assistant extension agent in Gibson County to work in the Agricultural Information Department, and it has statewide responsibilities so that... Uh, I made radio tapes and that, and sent those around to various stations in Indiana and Illinois, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> so that was my principal job was distribution of radio, and then television came along and we began to doing visual stuff that we circulated. There were only about a dozen stations in the three states, four states around us. Mm -hmm. Okay. You did the filming here and then sent it out? Yeah. The TV? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, or, or a series of fast-moving still pictures with <laughs> yeah. with captions that could be read locally. Yeah. And, Do you uh, ever remember hearing about the Mapati program? Mapati, yeah. 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 Okay. That was the flying schoolroom right. over Montpelier. I think it had about a 50-foot antenna that hung down from its DC-6 sure. that circled. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, yeah. uh, I was not here when that occurred, but I've heard about it. And I've had people like, I interviewed Dave Moses, and I asked him to, uh -huh. yeah. to pick up it and give me inf yeah. give him information for researchers because it was a unique program. Yes, I mean, it was, it was just yeah. one of a kind. Yeah, there weren't any satellites at that time uh -uh. to uh -uh. bounce yes. signals from. No, <laughs> it was the plane <laughs> every yeah. day, yeah. taking off from the airport. And with pre-taped... Pre Right. Programs. <laughs> you know, you look back on it. God, it was really, you know, right on the cutting edge. It was primitive, but it was. Uh, it it did the, it did the fun. job that it was supposed to do, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, I think they were happy to see the satellites go up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever. Been, that must have been boring to fly in circles around Mount Pelion. No one seems hours. to mention that. I think the the I've not interviewed the pilot, so maybe that's the reason. <laughs> well, I wonder how they kept awake. I don't know. We don't want to know. <laughs> well, <laughs> we didn't have any accidents, so we know they were, you know, taking I, turns. <laughs> I've never heard of any accidents. <laughs> no, I don't uh, think they ever forgot to pull up the antenna before <laughs> landing. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Uh, well, yeah. but back to the leadership yeah. program, right. I really do compliment Beth Archer because she's kept the thing going and involved in all the fundraising after the Lily. Money. Is she still around? Oh, yeah. Okay. She, she's, uh, with, uh, she she operates out of Danville, Indiana. That's her office there. Okay. But uh, she gets the people to judge the applicants. and they, they've been So the program is still ongoing? It's still goes. Yeah, the program okay. is still going. And Okay. A lot of really good people go mm -hmm. in and come out of it. Okay. Uh, well, so yeah, you know, that, do you that, make that, any that, hmm? Go ahead. That was just going to say, that's about when that uh, class, when, I th when my third class was finished by then, I retired about six months later. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. How about the, the um, media coverage for the 4-H Congresses, the 4-H Club oh, Congresses? Well, um, Indiana had a delegation going up there every year, and uh, were they always held in Chicago? Or yeah. Were they real? Okay. As far as I know. Okay. I, <laughs> that's that's the only place I went was to Chicago. Just asking, and, you know. Uh, yeah. By most congresses move around. <laughs> yeah, and um, I, they had a fairly large uh, information staff taken from all over the U.S. The, the National 4-H Foundation uh, would. Uh, provide the venue for us to stay and and we'd line up 
our own delegation kids with media just by request or by a little bit of nudging sure and uh, you know that was an interesting visit because we got wonderful kids that went there and they were a lot of them came up through the ranks got oh. leadership training and oh, just yeah. went on from there yeah. right yeah. Oops. <clears throat> the national 4-h club congress was a really an awards trip for stop for top um, 4-H kids and their project achievements, leadership sure. achievements. That's good. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, you became an honorary state farmer and then worked with the uh, the conventions that were here held at Purdue. Yeah. You still are. Yeah. Do you still drop in at some of them? They still come? No, no. I haven't been to one for quite a while. I'm trying to think of the longtime farm broadcaster of WLW who... Uh, uh, no, not W O W O Fort Wayne. Uh, he and I received the award at the same time. And, uh, Were you surprised huh? when you yeah. got the award? Yeah, to be honest with you, yeah, good I surprise. Good. I think so. I had never been a FFA member, although I did take Bit. vocational agriculture in high school. Mm -hmm. A couple of years. Yeah. That's very nice. So. Okay. You got any notes, any other uh, things that we've missed on that, you think? No. I, How about just I, a comment or two about Johnny DeCamp, that he... No, he was a good friend. Yeah, he was a sure. neighbor. Right, okay. And <laughs> we spoke to each other. <laughs> and you see him from time to time, the voice of... Oh, of yeah, Purdue. well, the boys yeah. come over and play here sure. when, they, when right. they were young and you know, had a good time. But, uh, Ann was a really nice person. So they live. They live near you, right? Well, down. No. Okay. There, there was there was a house between us now and where they lived, but there wasn't at the time. There was just meadow and trees. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I understand. So our daughter was well, somewhere in age between uh, John T. and Arthur. And, uh, yeah. Well, okay. the kids played. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I think we were going to move to the award that uh, the Pioneer Award from the Agricultural Communications and Education. Oh well, that was, that was in Fairbanks, uh, Alaska. Researchers, that's where it was given uh, in Fairbanks. That was the convention. Well, up oh, there. well, that was when I got the big number. <laughs> yeah, the, the, like I guess you call it the Career Achievement Award. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pioneer Award was. Uh, for people under 35, and I was just exactly 35 when I got it. <coughs> Back in, I think, 1955 or 57, I guess it was 57. 50, it was 59, yeah, it was 1959. That's the year the convention was held in, in Florida. <laughs> so I remember that. Yeah, the Pioneer Award was given to, there were five um, geographic areas and north south and north central who received the award mm -hmm. in that area. Okay. It was a surprise, but I was happy to get That's the good. trip. And also, you they gave you the you're the recipient of the Radio TV Award of Excellence and the Professional Award from the uh, yeah, association. Yeah. Well, I made tapes, both radio and TV for distribution. And. They were used, and you got the. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I think we sent out probably 90 some radio tapes to various stations in the five. Whatever happened to all those tapes? They came back, usually. Okay. okay. And then they were, the new service would keep them, or? Oh, yeah. Huh? Well, they'd keep them as long as they wanted them, as long as they wanted them, and then return them in a. I think we even had a postage paid return <laughs> <coughs> to get them to come back. But they were housed here then, yeah. Yeah, we sent out twice, I think it was twice a month, yeah, we'd send out uh, mm -hmm. about five or six programs on each tape. Sure, okay. How about the uh, Cooperative Extension Specialist Association, the Career Award for Excellence? That's no, well, I got it. I, I know, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's the most I can say You're about You're the recipient it. of it, okay. Uh, 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 looking at your notes, is there something that... Uh, oh. You'd like to? I think well, I've, I'll leave it. I think leave I've it for covered you everything summary. that I had. Okay. 
How about agriculture, the communicate agricultural communicators communication of the twenty first century? Any comments on that? How it's changed or oh, and you closing the market? Change, it up uh, to you. Yeah, the <coughs> well, so much stuff is done by a computer now and uh, emails and uh, other right. other terms that escape me or or I have not had to use. The technology has moved and well, things have been yeah, impacted the, it. The communications <coughs> technology. I well uh, what is it what is it you, they do on the little handheld Oh the uh, your Blackberry and your messaging and yeah. your cell phone and yeah. text well, messaging. That's, that's certainly person to person. It sure is. Although if you're on some kind of a network why you're telling the world. That's right. So Facebook and <laughs> Twitter yeah. and all of those. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't engaged in any of those, <coughs> so I hardly know what what could happen any better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, any? Well, I'll let you do the closing. Anything oh. special that you want to say or any closing comments? As you look back, oh, look well, back ahead. It what my my work in agricultural communications was not anything I had expected to do when I was a student at Purdue or any time previous, but uh, got into it and enjoyed it. Sure, right. <laughs> and it just was right down your alley because you had well, a background in it. At least I managed to survive in the <laughs> dark alley. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and it, it, you got your notes all taken care of? No, so you think yeah, that that's, what we, that's what we forgot to, or okay. didn't get around right. to the first right. time. So. Thank you very oh, much. Well, you're welcome. My thank pleasure. You. I thank you very much for this. Happy <laughs> to know somebody's possibly interested in it. Oh, we are very.